Welcome to the 15th video on ancient Rome and we are continuing right where we left off in the 14th video with the early Roman Republic and the struggle for central Italy. Now as I mentioned in the last video Rome was surrounded by a bunch of enemies early on in central Italy and so there was very limited growth by Rome. This was really more a case of survival than aggressive growth and most of this occurred in the 5th century BC. It's really not until the 4th century BC that we see Rome start to get aggressive. Now in the last video we talked about the Latin tribes, the Volsci, and the Aquians. In this video we're going to talk about the Sabines, the city of Vi, and then you'll see right down here and then it happens. And that is uh, an event which we'll get to at the end of this video and it's quite an amazing event in early Roman history. Okay let's talk about the Sabines now. And as you can see on that map they are to the north of the Aquians and to the northeast of Rome. And they are another one of those mountainous tribes that gave the Romans a lot of difficulties. Now, of course, we know the Sabines kind of had this special relationship with the Romans. You will remember that two of the Roman kings were Sabines, Numa and Ancus. And so some of the Sabines are friends with Rome and others are enemies. And what happened here is some of the Sabines that came down out of the mountains became what historians like to call Latinized. So they became good friends with Rome and many lived and prospered in Rome itself. But the Sabines that remained in the mountains were fiercely hostile towards the Romans. And what the Sabines in the mountains frequently did was they would always ally with all of Rome's enemies, and mostly the Aquians and the Volscians. Now in 494 BC, Rome had to fight the Sabines, the Aquians, and the Volscians at the same time. And so Rome was in mortal danger. But Rome was able to handle this and defeated all of these tribes during that year. Now one of the things the Sabines were well known for was their lightning raids. They didn't like to go head to head with the Roman legions. And so they would do these lightning raids and pillage farms and threaten Roman commerce. So they were a constant menace to the Romans. Now it wasn't until 290 BC that the Sabines were finally eliminated and absorbed into the Roman Republic. Okay, so let's move on to the city of Vi. And this was one of the main Etruscan cities. And the city of Vi was public enemy number one for the Romans during the 5th century BC. So this conflict lasted almost a hundred years. And these cities really hated each other. It was almost a Greek hatred in terms of some of the rivalries that went on in Greece. And part of the problem was that the two cities were very close to each other in terms of distance. They were only 10 miles apart. So they were bound to be natural enemies. And the city of Vi in Rome had the usual disputes in terms of territory. And one of the things the city of Vi desperately wanted was that valuable position that Rome had on the river Tiber. Now this was not an easy fight for Rome. Vi itself was very, very powerful. In some respects at this point they were more powerful than Rome. Now for the most part, especially in the early 5th century BC, both sides would raid each other's territory. Now finally a peace treaty was signed but it didn't last long. An all-out war broke out in 426 BC. Now one thing that's to be admired by the Romans is when war occurred, the Romans didn't commit to it 50% or 75%, they committed to it 100%. And so the entire city of Rome was committed to doing one thing, and that was winning the war that they were involved with. And they would commit every single resource they had to accomplish that goal. And so the ultimate objective was to pound you into the ground and pound you into submission. And the Romans would not stop until that had occurred. And we see that really with the city of Vi. The Romans simply didn't give up. They kept coming and coming and coming. Now one of the main figures associated with the battle against the city of Vi was Marcus Furious Camillus. Now in the early Republic he was one of the great heroes in Rome. He was elected five times dictator if you can imagine that. He was also awarded four triumphs. Now you're lucky just to get one triumph but he got four. Now one thing Camillus did was he didn't attack the city of Vi initially. He started to capture all the towns and allies associated with Vi over several decades. Now a little bit later on the Romans pulled up to the city of Vi itself and laid siege to the city and that occurred around 405 BC. 
But this sort of dragged on and on, and it was inconclusive for a long time. It took actually 10 years, so this was almost similar to the Greek siege at Troy. It just went on and on and on. But the citizens of Veii refused to surrender, and so they were very resilient, a lot like the Romans, actually. They didn't want to give up. And so finally, Camillus decided to use unconventional warfare. A tunnel was dug underneath the city, and this allowed the Romans to surreptitiously enter the city unopposed, and they were able to seize the wall and gates, and that was it for the city of Veii. Now, after the fighting was over, many of the Etruscan residents at Veii were driven out of the city, and many were actually sold into slavery. So that was basically it for the city of Veii. And the territory was allotted to Roman citizens. And I think four new tribes were actually created as a result. And so the city's capture resulted in a considerable increase in Rome's territory. And this is kind of the first time that we see Rome becoming aggressive. It's sort of a turning point in Roman history. And the surrounding areas in Italy are starting to take notice of Rome. Now, over the next century, more Etruscan cities would be added one by one to the Roman Republic, and so they started to fall like dominoes. And so things are looking pretty good for the Romans at this point, and they look ready to bust out into the rest of Italy. But then it happens. Remember I talked about that on the first slide? The Gauls appear like a hurricane up north and start rampaging through northern Etruscan territory. And you can see that on this map right here. Now, this area in brown is the dominion of the Gauls in northern Italy. Now, the Celts and the Gauls are kind of the same thing, so don't get that confused. And so they start moving down through Etruscan territory and are laying waste to anything and anyone they come into contact with. Now, at this point, the Etruscans and the Romans decide to set aside their differences and unite against the common enemy in the Gauls. And so a city called Clusium asks for help against the Gauls. And the Romans send some emissaries up there to negotiate with the Gauls. And then something a little bit bizarre happens. One of the Roman emissaries kills one of the Gallic chieftains. And so now the Gauls are outraged at the Romans. And the Gauls insist that the Romans hand over the individual that killed one of their chieftains. The Romans however, refuse. And so I can just see the Gallic leader named Brainus grab a map and go, where's Rome, guys? We're heading there. And that's what happens. They start moving towards Rome. Now, Rome realizes this is the greatest threat they've ever faced, and they send out six legions to confront the Gauls. And the battle occurs near a river called Aelia. And the Romans are severely routed. Both the left and right flank are well annihilated. And then the Gauls went after the Roman center and started slaughtering the Roman center. And then the Roman Roman army in earnest fled the battlefield. And they fled anywhere they could go. Some Romans fled to Veii, actually, and other Romans headed back to Rome. And so now the road to Rome was effectively open to the Gauls, and they sack Rome. And so the Gauls are literally everywhere. They're around the Roman countryside, they're in the Roman city, and so the Romans decide to barricade the Capitoline fortress and hold up there in the Roman city. And so there's this back and forth that goes on where the Gauls are trying to take the Capitoline fortress. And then there's a couple different endings to this story, a couple different versions. And I want to present both of those and you guys can decide whichever one you want to believe in. Now Livy will tell us that the Roman legend Camillus leaves the city and reorganizes is the Roman army out in the countryside. And then in an epic battle, he drives the Gauls out of Rome. Now, that's one version, and it's a version that most historians tend to discount. The version that most historians believe in is that the Romans realized pretty quickly that the Gauls weren't really interested in a long-term occupation of Rome and Latin territory. They only had a simple concern for money and loot. And so the Romans simply bribed them and paid them off with gold and silver, and the Gauls eventually went on their merry way. And so again, you can choose to believe whatever version you want. But one thing is certain, the Gauls sacked the city, and it's unknown exactly what records were lost, but we have to imagine quite a few vital records were lost, especially records that would have given us a more clear picture of what was going on during the time of the kings. Nonetheless, those records are lost to history. Now, after the Gauls leave Rome, the Romans actually considered abandoning Rome and reestablishing their base in the recently conquered Vi. Now, that that would have been a little bit strange. Can you imagine the VI Republic or the VI Empire? It doesn't quite have the same ring as the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire. But after some debate, the Romans decided to stay in Rome and rebuild the city. And that is something that is remarkable about the Romans. They learn from their lessons. And if they make a mistake, they fix it, they get it right. And so they turn defeats into victories almost in a sense 
because they learn from their lessons. And one of those lessons was, we need a wall around the city of Rome. And so the Servian Wall is constructed and completed. And from that point on, an invader will have to lay siege to the city before entering it. And this will be very useful during the times of Hannibal, as we will see later on. Now, many cities would have simply capitulated after such a devastating defeat. But this was actually only a temporary setback for the Romans. They actually rebound very quickly and begin to set their sights on the rest of Italy. And we will get into that in the next several videos. See you guys then.